Welcome back to our Microtic tutorial series. Have you ever needed to extend your network's reach without cables, or connect isolated network segments wirelessly? Today, you're in for a discovery, as we delve into the world of Microtic wireless bridging. Join us as we unveil the methods to bridge gaps in your network, and unleash the full potential of your wireless connectivity. Let's get started. A wireless bridge is a way to connect two or more networks without using cables, by using a wireless link between an access point and a client device. Station bridge mode allows you to bridge two networks using two microtic devices. This mode is the simplest and most efficient, as it doesn't require any additional configuration on the wireless interface. However, this mode only works between microtic devices, and it only supports one client per AP. The 802.11 standard defines how wireless devices communicate, but it doesn't fully specify how to enable a bridge over a wireless link. As a result, different vendors have developed their own approaches and implementations for wireless bridging. Microtic offers a flexible solution for this scenario with something called Station Pseudobridge Mode. This mode allows bridging between two networks using a microtic device as a client and a non-microtic device as an AP. Let's explore its functionality. In Station Pseudobridge Mode, the station device performs MAC address translation for IPv4 traffic. It maintains an IPv4 to MAC address mapping table, enabling it to correctly route IPv4 packets to and from the connected devices. While communicating with the access point, the station utilizes its own MAC address for transmission. Upon receiving packets from the access point, the station translates the MAC address to that of the connected device for proper delivery. For IPv4 traffic, such as HTTP requests, the pseudobridge can manage the traffic adequately even with multiple devices connected behind it. However, this mode cannot correctly forward non-IPv4 traffic because it relies on a single MAC address translation mechanism. Consider a scenario in which a device sends an ARP request to discover the MAC address of another device within a local network. Upon receiving the ARP request, the microtic device in pseudobridge mode translates the source MAC address to its own and forwards the request. When the target device sends an ARP reply with its MAC address, it reaches the AP and then the microtic pseudobridge. But due to the pseudobridge mode's limitations, it may incorrectly translate the destination MAC address to that of the first device it communicated with, not the original requester. This misdirection occurs because pseudobridge mode is designed to handle a single device's MAC address translation for non-IPv4 protocols, and ARP is such a protocol. WDS station mode allows you to bridge two or more network segments using multiple microtic devices. This mode is useful when you want to create a large wireless network that covers a wide area, or when you want to connect multiple clients to a single AP. However, this mode requires the most configuration on the wireless interface, such as enabling WDS, setting the WDS mode, and adding the WDS peers. Also, this mode only works between microtic devices, and it may reduce the wireless performance due to the overhead of WDS. In this video, we will focus on the first mode, Station Bridge. It is the most common and simple scenario. We will use two microtic devices, one as an access point and the other as a client. Connect to the first device using Winbox and open the Bridge menu. In our previous video, we created a LAN bridge on our device. Let's extend it wirelessly. Click on the Ports tab and add the wireless interface to the bridge. Open the wireless menu and double click on the wireless interface. On the wireless tab, set the mode to AP bridge, set the SSID and enable the hide SSID option. We will leave other settings as they are and explore wireless in more detail in our upcoming tutorial. On the security profiles tab, click on the default profile and set the mode to dynamic keys, the authentication types to WPA2 and set the pre-shared key. Navigate to the IP menu and select Addresses. Here you need to assign an IP address to the bridge interface. For this tutorial we will use the default microtic private address. Additionally, you have the option to set up a DHCP server on this bridge. 
By doing so, any device that connects to the bridge through either microtic device will be automatically assigned an IP address. Here we are also using the default microtic DHCP server configuration. For a step-by-step guide on setting up a DHCP server, refer to our previous video on DHCP. Now let's configure the client device. First, connect to it and go to the Bridge menu. In the Ports tab, ensure that the WLAN 1 interface is added to the default bridge. Next, navigate to the Wireless menu and double-click on WLAN 1. Set its mode to Station Bridge and make sure the SSID matches that of the AP. Configure the default security profile to mirror the settings of the AP device. It's important to assign an IP address to this bridge that is different from the app's IP. During this process you may temporarily lose connection due to the IP address change. Once reconnected you will notice that both microtic devices have different IP addresses, avoiding conflicts and simplifying management. After reconnecting, let's test our connection to the AP by pinging it from the client side. The ping should be successful. Now try to ping Google's DNS to test the internet connection. If the ping fails, indicating a lack of root to the host, you'll need to add an IP root. Go to IP and then Routes. Click on the plus sign. For the destination IP address, enter all zeros to indicate all destinations and set the gateway to the app's IP address. Don't worry about the details, as we will delve into routing in our upcoming tutorial. After setting the route, test the internet connection again. This time, the ping should be successful. You can also verify the connection status by going to the wireless menu and selecting the registration tab. Here, you can see the AP device, as well as check the connection status and signal strength. Since we used the default bridge, let's disable the default DHCP server on this bridge and attempt to receive an IP address from the app's DHCP server. Renew the IP configuration on your connected PC and you should successfully receive an IP address from the app's DHCP server. That's it. You have successfully configured a wireless bridge between two networks using microtic devices. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on Microtic Wireless Bridging. I hope you found it helpful and informative. See you next time.